What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is an epic spring day here in Montana and we are doing a two day or a two nighter of camping here. I uh, had some original plans of making my way up to Kootenai Falls for the night and then making my way back down to where I'm currently at which is near St. Regis and pulled into this spot because I wanted to maybe fish before heading up towards Kootenai Falls and I can't leave. Uh, it is too spectacular here right now and this is by far one of my favorite spots to come to especially once springtime starts to hit Montana. Um, so this is about 10 miles outside of St. Regis. It's fantastic because it's far enough away from the road so you don't really hear too much noise. You hear the train as it passes through but you have phenomenal views all along this river right here. So we're gonna stay here. Um, it's just gonna be me tonight and then we have a friend that's coming tomorrow afternoon that we'll be camping with and yeah it is fantastic out. 65 degrees, slight breeze, sun is shining. Honestly I can't ask for much more than this so we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up. Um, we're gonna just snag the spot since no one's here right now and I really don't want to lose it. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. A little bit of ASMR mixed in, talking. You guys seem to like that quite a bit. And I think it's gonna be an epic one. So we have an epic meal planned for tonight and then also an epic meal planned for tomorrow night when Ethan, the friend that we're meeting up with, makes his way over from Missoula. So again, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and see you on the flip side.
All right, guys, we are going to go and cut a tree that I scouted. Uh, it's down over there. It's just deadfall. So um, for fire tonight, firewood, we're going to go cut that up. And I wanted to talk about this. So this is the Milwaukee M18. What do they call this? Like the hatchet um, pruning saw, whatever you want to call it. But this is something that I think is amazing. Um, this thing cuts through stuff like it is nothing. So it's also compact, small. Um, the battery lasts super long. So this is the XC 6.0 battery. Um, again, M18, so the bigger one. Definitely recommend this over maybe doing something like a gasoline chainsaw. Uh, and if you're worried about the battery life, this has lasted me about two days and cutting some fairly large trees down, so I'm not too concerned about that. Milwaukee does make a DC charger, so if you have like a Jackery or something like that, you can plug it into the cigarette port, charge this battery, or you can always get another battery if you want to and have two batteries when you're out camping. But like I said, one of these batteries, um, I feel good for about two days worth of camping and, and cutting a significant amount of wood. But this thing is amazing highly recommend it's a little bit of an investment i think i paid it right around 300 dollars for this thing with the battery on sale but it's a beast love it check it out and let's go cut, cut some wood all right guys we uh we got quite a bit of wood um again this was all deadfall so that's one thing if you're out and collecting firewood is the thing that i always try to do obviously is try to find stuff that is on the forest floor first if possible um, try to clean that up and scavenge that so you can tell a lot of this stuff is it's dead um, just based on the, the needles here and it snaps really easy it's unfortunate though because there's a lot of stuff that was cut out there that was not dead people just cut trees down unfortunately that are still alive so yeah we've got some wood probably try to scavenge a little bit more and the fun thing about scavenging wood is it's kind of like a, a treasure treasure hunt out there trying to find the deadfall that's on the forest floor and obviously it helps keep the forest floor clean for eventually fires and, and whatnot but we have quite a bit and I'm gonna see if I can show you guys um, yeah you can see still has full bars so pretty damn good we're definitely gonna have to cut this up and make it smaller obviously for the fire pit that we're going to be using but pretty damn good and like i said we'll probably go out for a little bit more there's some stuff that is down um, right over here that i'm just going to kind of scavenge and, and clean up a little bit more but do not cut stuff that is still alive okay <laughs> don't do it All right, guys, it is about 7.15 p.m. now, and we are going to get the fire going because um, we are going to lose sunlight. It is going down fairly quickly behind the mountain there. So we're going to get the fire started first. Um, once we get that going, we are going to start on dinner, which I am extremely stoked for. I am 
pretty damn hungry right now as well. So we're going to be making hamburgers as well. And uh, the way that I like to kind of make my hamburger specifically is kind of infusing some cheese into the actual mixture. So I'll show you what I do with that. Um, we're going to be using pepper jack cheese. So infuse it inside of the hamburger meat and then also throw some cheese on top of that. And then for toppings, I just have some onions, tomatoes, I have some avocado as well. And then we have some onion buns, which I'll also roast those um, either on the fire or in the cast iron pan. So cast iron cooking, again, game changer. It makes amazing burgers and yeah. So gonna get the fire started, meal and continue on. All right, so I don't have as much cheese as I thought I did. So we're not going to be putting any cheese inside just on the top. This is also the uh, the thin sliced stuff, so it's not super thick. I wanna make sure I have enough for the hamburgers themselves. Um, so we season that with Montreal steak seasoning. We have our other ingredients right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the jet boil set up and we're gonna start cooking them up. Um, lots of questions on the jet boil too, if it's worth it. And my answer is yes. I find the jet boil Genesis to be extremely easy to set up. It's also compact, especially when packed down um, compared to something like the Coleman stove, which is stays massive. Um, so yeah, I like it. I also find that it is a more consistent heat source as well, um, especially when I was using my Coleman prior to this one. So yeah, I love it. It's awesome. You can connect like two of these together too. So if you had someone else that had one of these jet boil Genesis, you could actually connect another one on here. And I've seen four or uh, two of them connected. So you have four total burners. And then you can also connect, um, basically like a smaller jet boil as well off to the side so if you needed to cook some coffee or something else in the morning you certainly could do that as well but as far as it is i love this thing it's been solid it's super easy to clean which is also nice and again the heat source is just super even and consistent Thank you. 
All right, guys, burgers are done. Um, toasted buns are a must, in my opinion, for a good burger. So and these are really thick. Holy smokes. We've got our toppings over here. We just, again, we got some tomatoes. Got a few onions, and then we also have some avocado. Condiments, um, I don't have much. I just have some mayonnaise and a little bit of mustard, so I'll definitely put some of that on there. A little bit of this on there. Boom. Alright guys, <laughs> holy smokes, get you in here so you can see this, hell yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. Mm. Yeah, it's good, guys. Excellent. So, onion buns. I think this butter makes the difference for a lot of stuff. Um, it is the garlic and herb. So I even just use a little bit on there. I'm cooking the burgers and then just for the buns as well. And then just that Montreal steak seasoning, which is great. And these are perfect. Man, it's good. All right, good morning everyone. Uh, we slept amazing last night and uh, the condensation is a huge difference with the Super Pacific. So I have camped in this spot many times with the GFC in the past and condensation, <laughs> as you know, with the GFC is the 
extra hidden thing that comes with it that no one expects. Um, the, G the GFC is horrible for condensation, and this has the big passive airflow, or not passive, I should just say airflow lens in general, whereas the GFC doesn't have any at the top of the roof in the four corners there. So this has the vent on the left side, right side, the back window as well. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, it's like common sense <laughs> that you should have the ability for air to escape on the top. And yeah, they made a big difference last night. Very minor um, amounts of condensation on the actual like honeycomb. But it is 87% humidity right now with an outside temperature of 35 degrees. So you're going to have some condensation in there. But again, it's a huge difference compared to what the GSC was. So super stoked about that because we didn't run the diesel heater last night. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to start with some coffee. I'm going to do probably uh, two shots of espresso with the Outen. And then I'll probably make a, a little bit of a, a larger pot, maybe in the jet boil too. But I want something quick and easy and fast. So that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, just made another, take, hopefully you can see, come on, there we go. Oh, man, 
These are fresh, well, I should say frozen huckleberries from last year, but Montana huckleberries picked. Just frozen in the freezer from last year, but man, they are good. Um, I forgot I was making pancakes, so I forgot to grab syrup. So we're just eating them as they are. What? They're damn good. Huckleberries are good. It's, uh, sun's out, so now it's warming up. A little bit chilly this morning. Mainly just due to the moisture. Uh, let's see. It's 82% humidity. <clears throat> Temperature says it's 42. And that's obviously inside the Super Pacific there. Once you get out in the sun, it's a lot better. So, we're going to eat these pancakes. And it's still early. We're just chilling, you know. Um, I do have a run plat is planned today. I need to hit five miles. And probably do that. Maybe jump in the river afterwards. I'm not sure yet. But I gotta track a little loop around here to hit the five miles. So yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna finish eating these amazing huckleberry pancakes. Enjoying it right now. Um, again, one of my favorite spots to come. It's just so beautiful here. Definitely have to get here early because people obviously like to claim these spots, and this is a uh, spot that I enjoy the most. Is right here. But, yeah, wow. Hmm. Uh, besides that, we're just going to enjoy it. Super Pacific did phenomenal with the vents up top. So I have camped again in this time, or in this spot, numerous times with the GFC in the past. And if you're a GFC owner, <laughs> or if you are looking to get a GFC, um you know the dreaded forehead drip of water the condensation waterfall that would occur not only on the back netting but just also on the honeycomb on the very top it would like either run down towards your feet or you get woken up in the middle of the night because the water is collecting essentially on the back netting of the gfc and it drips onto your forehead it is not a good time and it sucks immensely I had all three of the vents opened on the Super Pacific last night and it did incredible. Uh, very minor dampness up on the top of the roof in the honeycomb and like along the extrusion, which is expected to some degree. But again, when we went to bed last night, um, I think peak humidity was like at 89%, which is super high. Um, in that type of situation, the only way that you could mitigate condensation completely was obviously if I was running the diesel heater. But vents 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 these vents are amazing and super pacific knows how to properly vent a tent in extreme humidity or even just wet climates i mean they're in the pacific northwest like come on guys so yeah besides that we're gonna finish enjoying these pancakes we'll probably get ready for a run here in an hour or so and uh then kind of continue to chill, wait for Ethan to come, and enjoy the rest of the day. Oh, all right, guys. We just got back from a shorter run, so nothing, nothing too long today. Um, just slowly building that endurance, which is actually feeling really good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so it is currently uh, almost twelve. So we're gonna get something to eat with some protein and some carbs. I brought some Greek yogurt. We have some fresh blueberries. And then some uh, tangerines as well, and some bananas, and I think I have an apple in there too, so we'll probably do something like that. And might dip our toes in the water down there and then just kind of sit and enjoy. It is so freaking gorgeous out right now. Uh, yeah. Is that a cloud in the sky? Slight breeze? Sunny? 
So, yeah, we're going to enjoy some food and just kind of chill and relax for a little bit while Ethan is on his way. So, he should be here probably around 3-ish, 4-ish. And then tonight we will be cooking some steaks up. We've got some potatoes as well. She's bringing broccoli, I believe, or asparagus, one of the two. And then we'll also probably do some cinnamon rolls. So that's the game plan. I'm going to get you guys some shots, obviously, throughout the rest of the day. And then, obviously, dinner tonight, we'll be recording that as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy this Sunday in beautiful Montana. So these are the Sea to Summit bowls. And anything really like Sea to Summit is super cool. Their newest line that they just released is like a totally new step above what they've done with everything else. Um, the great thing about Sea to Summit stuff is a lot of it is compact. So a lot of these bowls obviously break down. Their cups as well that I had for coffee breaks down. This has a like stainless steel bottom and then the brim is also like stainless steel. So it's very sturdy yet very compact, which is awesome. So super in love with their stuff. If you haven't checked it out, it's at REI as well and highly recommend at least, you know, checking out maybe some of their cups, their bowls, whatever it is. They're constantly coming out with new things. They have the, I mean, my mattress that's actually up in the Super Pacific right now is the Sea to Summit. The x -Pet's not up there. I used their quilt last night as well. It's awesome stuff and it's fairly affordable as well. So definitely check that out. All right, not bad, huh? So we've got blackberries, um, tangerines, a little bit of granola, we have some apples, and then we've got bananas on the side. Now, if I had a little bit of honey, a little bit of drizzle of honey on top would be the perfect touch, in my opinion, but we're looking pretty damn good. <laughs> 